we're back again and this time we're exfiltrating data from the system um, we have an assigned port so let's get started first I verify connectivity as you can see that I'm connected to my victim machine ping 10.73.100 uh, next step is to run an nmap service version scan so that you can see what version is running on your assigned port here we go we have 1099 running uh, RMI, Java RMI registry. That is good information to have. So what we're going to do is hop over here to Metasploitable. We're going to open that up in a new terminal because we're still going to need to use the root terminal. Okay, now that we're have Metasploit open, let's search for our exploit. Okay, so we're gonna search for a Java RMI server exploit since that's what we're dealing with. And there it is. So that's the one we're going to use. Use multi miss Java RMI server. First things first, we set remote host to our victim machine. We're going to set our port ten ninety nine. That's our designated port. set our local host to our Kali machine. And I'm going to use port Eight. And normally to set a payload, but this one actually has a default payload that is customized for this exact exploit. So there is no mean. You can just run the exploit. Okay. We're in. So we're in a interpreter session. Let's look around. And here I see a bunch of subdirectories. We got credit cards and red team look here. Okay, let's start there. I'm typing a little slow. I'm on an i5 processor, so 
Um, just want to make sure it doesn't double type on me. In red team, look here. I see a file called shadow. So let's go ahead and cat that out. Boom. Now we have all these uh, user fields. Um, let's find Red Team 7 Student 3 now. Here's my user field. The, only the second field is, is uh, hashed, is encrypted. Um, but you can copy the whole field. It doesn't, really, it doesn't make a difference. So you're going to want to take that line. Now, once you take that, you're going to open leaf pad and it's going to open a shadow results.txt. That's what I named the file as I took it and I saved it. So I'll show you. Right here, shadow results.txt. There's a P in there, but that is this saved. After you exfiltrate that information, you now have that to run later with a uh, John the Ripper cracking password cracking software. So. I went ahead, as you see, I spelled it wrong, John Shadow Results .txt. However, it still worked. Uh, even with my misspelling, I, I put in the exact file that was saved. It is currently running a hacking session on it. You can click for an update. It, this is gonna take a while. So we're gonna put this down. We'll see what else we can find in here. So let's drop back a directory and uh, see what's here. Okay. Red Team 7. That's us. Well, let's go to Red Team 7. And let's see what's here. Okay, so I see three dot text. I see student three, since that's who I am. We'll start there. Three dot text obviously is a file. So we're gonna check both, but let's cat that out first. Mm, password right there. Red team seven student three with plain in plain text with no encryption so um student three is a subdirectory or a folder so we're gonna go ahead and go there see what is in that folder okay we got mypass.txt so let's cat that out and see what's in there let me make sure to spell it correctly hmm, okay yeah this one is encrypted but this is good it still looks like a familiar encryption to me. It, it seems similar to a base 64 because of the equal sign and the 
higher and, and smaller letters. So we're going to copy that and we're going to actually use a uh, encryption, uh, a hash cracking tool in another software. So let's go ahead and jump over there and take care of that. Okay, so we are here. We have the contents of the mypass.txt file and I put it into CyberChef. Now I'm noticing some similarities that I've seen from encryptions in the past. This lowercase, uppercase letters ending in an equal sign is giving me base 64 hunches. Drop in from base 64. There is our password, Red Team 7, Student 3. 